So let's say this is a composite you're creating and here is the subject. Now you want to use AI to create the shadow. So with the lasso tool, we're going to make a selection right over here and simply click on generate a fill. We're not going to type in anything, just generate again. Let's see what it does. So this is the side of generative film most people won't show on social media. Now it's pretty evident that a lot of us are concerned. So here's five solid reasons why generative film will not replace you as a creative professional. Yet, this is a big one. The resolution of any generation right now is limited to 1024 pixels on the longest side. Now you might think there are a couple of workarounds. But take a look at this. So here are two photos at their full resolution. Now I tried to connect it with AI. So here's one generation. Now it looks fine when you look at it at this distance. But when you zoom in, so this is the original image. As soon as we move into the AI territory, have a look at this. This is an absolute degradation in quality and resolution, right? And obviously, this is not something you can use for commercial work. Instead, it's much better to use some other photos maybe you took during that trip to use that to combine these photos. Now, that would need skills, something that your clients cannot do. That's why they hired you. Anyway, take a look at this side right here. So this is the original photo. As soon as we move into the AI territory right here. Have a look at the difference. So here's the original one. This is the AI one and you can clearly tell this is filled with AI. Now there's a workaround. Now since each generation is going to be only 1024 pixels, what if we generate patch by patch, little by little? Will that fix our resolution issues? Maybe it will. So instead of generating all at once, what we can do is we can take the rectangular marquee tool and make a small area selection and generate just that area. For preciseness, you can also choose the style from normal to fixed size and choose 1024 by 1024. Just click to create that area. But this has its own drawbacks. Let's break it down. Number one, it's time taking. It's super time consuming. So you would generate one area, for example. Let's click on generate. Maybe you liked it. Maybe you didn't like it. So as you can see, you would have to go through several options for just one area. For example, for this area, I think this works the best. So you have to choose that. If it didn't work, you would have to generate again. Now, let's say you made one more selection. What if it didn't continue well? You would have to choose a different option, generate several more times. And for this example, let's say it's going to take you 14 to 15 blocks, each with three options or more. And you can just calculate the time it takes. Problem number two, there may be issues with continuation when we try to generate piece by piece. Take a look at this simple illustration. Let's say this is line one and this is line two. And now you generated this entire area. Now the AI would try to connect it perfectly. And the way it would do that, for example, it would do something like this maybe. Now, if you generate it piece by piece, little by little, imagine what would happen. Let's say we generated just this area, all right? The AI would probably continue this line and you generate it a little bit more. Maybe it takes it up, maybe it takes it down. You never know. And at the end, we are stuck. What about this area? What about the connection? So you're gonna have issues with continuation if you do it piece by piece. Problem three, we created a 1024 by 1024 selection right here, right? Now the generation is not even that size. Take a look at this. This was supposed to be a full 1024. However, if I turn off the mask of this generation, this is the entire generation. Let me go back to normal size. This is the entire generation. This is 1024 by 1024. So to make the most of the resolution cap, you would have to make even smaller generations and it would take even more time. So this brings us to our second reason as to why we are safe and that my friend is precision. Let's take a look at this example. So this is a shadow that I created with the pen tool. I used a lot of brushes. I also made sure that I painted some areas with a little bit of transparency to maintain the translucency of the dress. So this is what I ended up with. Here's the before and here's the after. I know it's not amazing, but let's take a look at the shadow the AI created. So this is what I created and this is what AI created. As you can tell, this is definitely not something that we can work with. Let's take a look at some other options. So if we go to the properties of the generative layer right here. So here's the first option. Second option, what in the world is that? And here is the third option. Definitely it will take hours to just clean that up. Trust me, it's much easier to create the shadow from scratch and you can learn how to do it in this video. So whenever you're pressing the generate button, consider throwing preciseness out the window. At least at the moment, of course, Adobe is working on this technology and it's going to get better with time. But 
even with time, you're gonna have to stay one step ahead and we are one step ahead with preciseness, with details and with symmetry. Why do we mention symmetry? Let us take a look at this example. So let's say you wanna generate the wheels and it will do a good job, I suppose. So let's select the wheel areas, click on generate a fill, click on generate right here. Now I'm sure it's gonna generate the wheel all right, the reflection is gonna be all right, but there's gonna be something. Now, the wheels are okay, the reflection is okay. If you zoom out and look, this looks amazing. But if you zoom in, well, this is not even a perfect circle. This is a perfect circle and as you can tell, it's not, I mean, right in here as well. This is thinner, this is thicker, and right in here, I don't know what kind of spoke is that. This is thick again, this is thin again. So as you can tell, there is no sense of symmetry. This is a good result. There's no denying the fact, but no sense of symmetry. Let's take a look at other examples. Here's the first, here, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And here's the third. Now this is a car we wouldn't want to sit in unless we want to take it to the hospital or somewhere else that I don't wanna talk about. So for this example again, it is much easier to take the wheels from a different car and just composite it right here. You must be concerned about the reflection and for the reflection, we can definitely use generator fill, that's fine. But to get the wheels symmetrical and aligned properly, we would rely on the traditional techniques of masking, selection, blend modes, compositing. And by the way, if you're interested in compositing, using the traditional methods and even making it easier, to one or two buttons or functions, check out the Piximperfect compositing panel because that's the sponsor of this video. I sponsored this video. It will guide you through every step of the compositing process so you wouldn't be confused about where to start or where to go next. You can import and stack multiple elements at once, remove the backgrounds of all of the elements automatically, and even align them side by side with just one click. You can automatically match the subject with the background in few buttons. You can extract shadows in few seconds and even do little things like removing halos with just few clicks. You have everything you need, like hairbrushes for painting or masking in the hair. You have textures, you have overlays, you have unlimited color grading presets. So check it out. It's also approved by Adobe and you can learn more about it in Adobe's own channel or click the link in the description. Now here's the third reason. Maybe you already know this, but it's a big one. Check this out. So let's say I want to extend this image and we have to make a selection first of this area. Now do keep in mind that she is all covered, right? There is no skin showing. There is no vulgarity here. It's beautiful. It's amazing, elegant, absolutely incredible. Lots of details on the sari that she's wearing. Anyway, so let's click on generate a fill. Click on generate again. Let's see what it does. Just let's see what it does. Let's not focus so much on the details. Let's not focus so much on the quality. Let's just see what it does. There you go. The generated images were removed because they violate user guidelines. I don't know what kind of guidelines we violated. Now, one of the workarounds is definitely clicking on generate a fill and then typing in sorry right here and generate again. and it should work. To say that it lacks precision would be an understatement. Take a look at the jewelry. I don't know what, what to say here. It's just not. So here's the second result. It's, what is this? It reminds me of Lil Uzi word. Do you remember the news? He implanted diamond on his forehead and we definitely don't want it right here. Also at the moment, it's like placing a bet on the roulette table because you never know how good or bad the result you're gonna get. More often than not, it's good in one way and not so good in the other. Let's take a look. So here we have a ball, which I already color matched with the background. So only a creative professional can do that. Also, we tried to create a shadow with generator fill. So this is the result that I got. Now it looks good if you zoom out, but if you zoom in, have a look, it kind of messed up in this area. It isn't perfect, something we definitely cannot use for commercial purposes. This area is messed up as well. Let me show you how many generations I had to do. Look at the amount of generations. So here's the first one. As you can tell, this area is nice, but this area is messed up. Here's the second generation. This area is messed up. This area is nice. This area is okay. Here's the third one. So as you can see, some areas are okay. Other areas are messed up. And that's the kind of result that you can expect. So you would have to combine different generations to make sure every area is okay. And that is something your client will not do. Only you have the capacity to figure out what works and mask in properly. Again, we are falling back to our traditional methods. We are combining traditional with new modern methods and that's how it should work. And that's why you're unique. So as you can see, I combined a lot of generations. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Here's the third one, fourth, 
fifth and then I did some cleaning on top of that as well. So here's the cleaning with the remove tool. So combining all of that, this is the result we get. And I think it may need more work, but still, it needs work. It's not all automatic AI stuff. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but we have questions the answers to which are still unclear. For example, do you own the rights to whatever you create with Generative Fill? If yes, what kind of rights? Again, it's a gray area. Since Generative Fill is in beta, we cannot use it commercially as per Adobe's website. But when we finally can use it commercially, know that it's trained on Adobe stock and other things. So if we generate something and it picks elements from Adobe stock, how will the stock photographers that submitted those photos be compensated. I'm sure Adobe is working on a plan, but it's not announced yet. Also, when we use Generative Fill, what kind of license will we get? Will it have limitations? Or will it be a standard license, an enhanced license, or an extended license? I don't know. These are questions we are yet to find answers to clearly. Till then, would you risk using Generative Fill for major commercial projects, let's say for billboards for Amazon or Mercedes-Benz? I have my doubts. Now, the generative fill is a great background changer. As long as the background is blurred, you wouldn't have to worry about resolution as such. So let's try to do that in this example. First, select any of these three object selection, quick selection or the magic wand. Click on select subject. Also, if you want to use Adobe Cloud for it, it does a better job. So click on the drop down, choose cloud, select subject. It's a pretty darn good selection, but we want to fill the outside. So let's invert the selection. And how do we do that? Control shift I, command shift I, and use generative fill right here. Let's type in, for example, beach. Click on generate. The background is all right. The lighting is all right. And even the reflection is kind of on point. Here's the second one, and here's the third. What in the world is happening in the corner? I know what you're thinking, but let's not think that. Anyway, let's take a look at the edges. This is something that, oh my gosh, definitely needs work. Have a look right here. Background, we can blur it a little bit. We can work with it. Maybe we can add a bit of grain, but look at the edges. Look at that additional finger that AI created. This is definitely where we need a major cleanup. And we would need to have the technical know-how of traditional Photoshop skills to clean that up. Selections, masking, even the clone stamp tool would be useful right here. For example, you want to clean this area up, you would make a selection. Of course, I would use something like the pen tool. Let's say I made a selection like this, and then we can use the clone stamp tool First, we will create a new layer right here. We will choose the clone stamp tool from right here. We want to make sure that sample current and below is selected or all layers. Hold the Alt key or the Option key to take a sample and fix this edge right here. Control or Command D, as you can see how easily we fix that. So we need those skills and you as a creative have those skills. So you're fine. Now here's bonus reason number six. What separates you as a creative is the ability to work with details. More so, enhance the details. However, with Generative Fill, whenever we are tackling details, it just lets the dogs out. Right in here where it was supposed to create some feet, it created alien feet instead. In this example, after a lot of tries, we removed this guy right here. But as soon as we did that, have a look at the hand of this lady at the back. I don't know how many fingers are there. Have a look at the arm right here. It's just weird. Anytime it has to deal with hands, feet, faces, this is what you can expect as of now at the moment. So here's a fun example for you. I tried to generate the rest of the image and I typed in man, of course. So this <laughs> is what I got. So here's another generation. And here's another one. That is just insane. So I didn't type in anything for the other generations. And even then, uh, interesting faces. I'm sure this technology will only get better with time. Look at what happened with Mid Journey. Look at how it was with version 1, version 2, version 3. I even made a video about it long ago. Now with Mid Journey version 5, and right now I think 5.1, this is not even 5.1, this is 5. Look at what kind of images you can create. Thanks to Julie Weiland for helping me with the images. So she's an AI expert, a graphic designer. She created all of this with Mid Journey version 5. This is just insane. You cannot tell that this is not a photo. So here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. That's just 
insane development of AI. Big shout out to Julie Weiland for helping me with the comparisons and teaching me a little bit about AI. Definitely check out her work right here. In all of the cases, whether it's the present or the future, as long as you stay one step ahead of the game, no one can replace you. That is why it's important to stay true to our roots and techniques, but also keep up with the technology, learn new things. In all of these images that Julie created, she processes them in Photoshop. She has to have the professional skills to make the images work. So that's why it's important to learn new technologies and make the most of it instead. Take advantage of it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?